Joe for Joe's Nostalgia Overload. And today, it's going to be alright, because I'm Saved by the Bell. Now, I happen to know something about Saved by the Bell. Many of the things I've had go viral were about Saved by the Bell, including Zach Morris on Shark Tank and a Saved by the Bell musical, which got featured on MTV Hive, which is like, I don't know, fourth, fifth on the MTV Power Rankings. Anyway, today, something I didn't know existed until probably a couple months ago. Saved by the Bell Comics. Something I didn't even know they made until I saw this Rule 34 looking cover, Zack's Bachelor Party. Truthfully, I thought this was probably the only merchandise they had. A Zack Morris doll and a board game that I could never figure out how to play when I was younger. Though I did put an AC Slater sticker on the wall. <laughs> I stickied this AC Slater card to the wall of my room. Anyway, how can I ignore this cover? Who hasn't wanted Kelly Kapowski to strip for him? And I have to believe that this is as close as Screech ever got to a stripped down Lisa. Our story starts with Zach Morris dry humping his female carrier because she brought an invitation to his dad's boss's son's bachelor party. Naturally, Zach was only going to use this invitation to taunt Slater or something. We learn that Screech's dad gets away from his Elvis loving mom by hanging out for days in strip clubs. We also get a quick cameo from Anne from Arrested Development. Of course it's Anne. Look, Jesse even mentions Arrested Development. Like with the show, Jesse's flying her feminist flag high. And Kelly... Kelly just wants to know if girls still pop out of cake. Later on that night, Zach confronts his dad to see, you know, if he can go with him to this bachelor party. And of course, the dad probably just wants to take him kayaking again and pedal some computers. And his mom, who's now for some reason a brunette, also wants Zach to stay away from the club. <laughs> Wait till she realizes how much time he spends at the attic. Anyway, a disappointed Zach decides to go out running. Unfortunately, the town is in the middle of some twisted metal tournament, and Thumper almost runs down poor Preppy. You know, and if Zach would have survived being run down, he could have been represented by Peter Bash. Anyway, a hot girl named Stephanie should get the credit for saving Max Zorus my new Tumblr name. There must be something off about Stephanie, because within a couple minutes, Zach is telling her about his strip club problems and asking her out on a date. The next day, Zach's dad shows up at the school, probably high from a computer sale, and lets Zach know that he can now go to the bachelor party. But oh no, what about Stephanie? Well, if that girl was dumb enough to think that Zach was trustworthy. This is the face of deception, okay? And I don't care what you say, you can never trust anyone who pimped out every girl at Bayside so that he could get a car. Yeah, I know, he didn't pimp, pimp them out, but seriously, give it every girl's phone number away in a dating video that they didn't sign up for? Pretty sleazy. He even says it in the box. Zach is a con artist. Well, anyway, Zach fakes that his grandma broke her arm to get out of a date. And in the Saved by the Bell universe, lying is unacceptable, and that causes Zach to have nightmares about the party being a huge nerd fest, and Stephanie hopping out of the cake. Anyway, Zach wakes up, feels guilty, confesses, learns his lesson, and suffers some sort of karmic fate because he attends the world's worst bachelor party. Our second comic has Jesse being confused for being a pregnant teen. <laughs> a Slater baby. Jesse has a problem with the teacher's assignment to take care of a plant or an animal because it teaches girls to choose mothering. And now Jesse apparently has an army of women behind her. Anyway, this causes Zach to assume that the girls are planning a surprise party for him. But when it's later called a serious problem, Zach just assumes that a little AC is cooling in the Spano. Screech continues to fail at life by having garbage dumped on him. And Zach snitches to Jesse Spano's parents and at the same time knocks on the front door instead of climbing through the window. Hey, wait a minute. The Spanos are divorced. Miss Spano just discovers that Slater and Jesse are really taking care of a tiger cub. And Mr. Spano, he lined up a murderous row of people to talk Jesse into an abortion or something. Now we get festive with a Christmas edition of the Saved by the Bell comics. Zack introduces himself and the rest of the gang to us. We learn that Zack and Kelly actually have an open relationship in a clean PG Saved by the Bell sort of way. 
Anyway, the gang thinks that Zack is a little out of line today, so Preppy has to figure out a way to apologize to Kelly. Now, you'd think that Zack, Lisa, Screech, and Belding being from Indiana to now California is weird. How about the fact that Kelly is actually from Madison, Wisconsin? So Zack decides that he's gonna make us know. And if Uncle Jesse can do it, so can Zack Morris. Screech modifies a keg while wearing Jesse's clothes. Slater steals a bunch of fake trees, which they'll place next to a New England winter painting, which makes no sense if you're trying to recreate a Wisconsin winter. Everyone, including Max, is now being conned into helping Zack impress Kelly. And Zack's even gonna force Lisa and Jesse to wear booty shorts, because that helped Kelly somehow. Never mind, I underestimated old Albert Clifford, because he's the mastermind behind the booty shorts. Cameo from Lloyd Christmas. Twist! Madison County, Florida is where Kelly's from. The ice machine soon explodes like the Drake and Josh Christmas movie. The snow was made out of soap and it sets off sprinkles, leaving the gang to clean up the mess. And for no real reason, Zach gets forgiven by Kelly, and Zach soon forgets whatever lesson he just learned. <laughs>